Hi and welcome to Poly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So today we're going to do a fun and simple and quick little tutorial making some flower earrings. These are actually very quick and very simple to do but I think look quite nice when they are finished. This is one of my shorter videos so all the information you need about the clay, the amounts, all the equipment and everything else are in the details below the video. Other than that we're going to skip straight through but I will still be doing it step by step but it's such an easy one this one it doesn't take that long. So sit back relax and watch as I show you how we make these earrings and we're going to make these ones today and we'll start with making the very simple canes. To help create these earrings I've made this template for you and this is freely downloadable from my website and I've put a link in the details below the video and this shows the rough shape that we want the wire to be and where to place the petals. I've also done a separate little cutout just to show you the rough size of the petals and this is my original one which I used to make the template so I use this when we're cutting through the slices of the petals to check the rough size and shape. However this is only a guide, you don't need to stick to this completely and it's just there for ease and to help if you'd like it. I thoroughly conditioned my clays in the small amounts of colour and the conditioned clay I've pushed into very rough sort of triangular blocks as you can see there. The piece of green clay again I've conditioned and I've put it through a thin setting of my pasta machine so setting number seven on my machine or if you don't have a pasta machine just roll it as thin as you can with a roller by hand and that goes on one side for later on. And what we're going to do with these pieces is to make a Skinner blend with those and a Skinner blend with those. If you're unsure about Skinner blends, I do have a tutorial with a few hints and tips on that and I'll put a link to that in the details below along with everything else. So having pulled these into sort of rough triangular shapes, I can put them together with a diagonal like that to create more of a rectangular shape. And if you don't have a pasta machine, then you would simply roll them. And each time you've rolled, fold in half so you've got the purple on one side and the white on the other and then with the fold towards you so you're always rolling away from the fold just roll again try to keep it nice and oblong if you can and you would repeat that as many times as you need to get a nice blend from one side to the other however if you have got a pasta machine then it makes life much easier for you and of course this is a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use so I will put that through on the pasta machine till I've got the nice blend from one side to another each time folding in half and putting fold first through and as you've only got a small amount of clay I'll be using setting four. Once you have your nice blend, whether you've done it by pasta machine or by hand, simply fold that piece till it's about that size. If you're rolling it by hand, roll it that way to make it longer. And if you've got a pasta machine, put it through the darker end first in a pasta machine on the same setting as you have been using. And now you want to get as long and thin a piece as you can. So if you're rolling by hand, just start from one end and gradually work your way up. And if you're doing a pasta machine, then put it through your thinnest usable setting on your pasta machine. Once you have your long strip, we're simply going to roll this up. So for this one, we're going to roll from the lilac end up to the white. And all I'm doing is rolling it nice and tight, making sure there are no air bubbles as we go. Once we have that done, I'm simply going to quarter it. And it doesn't matter if you're not particularly even because this is a natural thing we're doing so each slice does not have to be the same but with each quarter I'm simply going to pull up the sides slightly push it in along the bottom to make it thinner repeat with the second piece put the two pieces together repeat with the next two and put those together till we have the four pieces all done And as you can see there, mine are very uneven. It really does not matter. Once we've got the four pieces, I'm pushing them all together at the bottom. And then once they're together at the bottom, I'm just going to pinch the tops to create more of a triangular shape to our cane. And then we're going to chop down the middle and see the patterns. You'll get that nice little pattern of the lilac going through to the white. Put them together like that. And then with your fingers pushing inwards like that, we're going to create a square. So just along the sides, top to the middle, turn over and do the same on the bottom. And we do that till we have a square cane. 
and then I'm just reducing down by working along the length, pressing in as I go and letting it go longer. I'm not pressing in too hard, nice, even, gentle motion as you go down. And then if you've got your template, we're looking for it to be slightly shorter than that petal is long. And once you've got that, then with the darker bit being one point and this being the top point, you're going to round off the sides of your cane to create the petal. So work your way down, all the way down the sides, and then you'll want to go back in, and this time, just pinching along the edges, just pinch in to create that petal shape and smooth along. You can have a look, see if it's roughly the right width with your um, template, which it looks as though it is, and then we'll just take off the end and have a look. So there's our petal. And I'm just going to have a look. It's not far off what I wanted with the template. If it's too small, I will simply press it down flat on the work surface and that will just spread it out slightly. So this is the outer petal, so we're going to need 12 slices, so I'm going to make sure I've got enough about that length that each slice I take will be fairly even. That can go on one side and we're going to go on to our second piece which is the purple and the white and we're going to do exactly the same all the way up to this stage with this one as well. So there's the second one done and I checked they were both roughly the same size both with the template and just looking at the size of them as I was making them. So they can go on one side whilst we get the wire work ready and keep these little cut off bits. We're going to use those in just a moment. I've got a couple of lengths of jewellery wire. This is the silver plated one. It's about four or five inches, so about um, 10 to 12 and a half centimetres. Um, and all I've got is I've got a round cutter. And again, this is about two inches, five centimetres in diameter. And the first thing I'm going to do is just take the wire and just bend it round the circular form and obviously anything you've got whether it's a jam jar you know anything you find at home that's um, round will work for this it's just to give ourselves a bit of form and then once we've got our hoops we want to make them into the shape we're using on our template so the easiest way i found of doing this is to get something quite fine and you use that to curve around. Now I am using an old blunt polymer clay blade but I have masked off the sharp end so it's very thin but I'm not going to cut myself. I wouldn't recommend doing this with an unmasked polymer clay blade but you're looking for something as thin as you can get. If not this then something like the handle of a spoon or an old credit card, something along those lines which is nice and thin, um, not too wide if possible because what we want to do is to curl this round. So I'm going to put this up against the wire, sort of more or less find the middle point, it doesn't have to be exact, but I'm going to press down and I'm going to press it down until it curves really quite thin at the bottom, which is why I say if you've got something that's quite thin or narrow, it works better. So repeat for the other one. And pinching them narrow and small at the top means you've got a nicer shape. So having put it then I've got that, we can then open it out ever so slightly on our template till we get the shape we want. So that side can go for just fractionally bigger. And it's only roughly, it doesn't have to be exact, but this template gives you a guideline. And then once I've done that, holding it in my hands, I will chop off the excess with my jewellery pliers just wide of what we need. And then with the round nosed pliers, just grab one end and curl it in and around. Repeat with the other one. And if you can, you want them nice and level, but don't worry because we will level that up in a moment. Put it back onto the template to check that we are roughly where we should be and repeat with the other one. Once you have your two pieces done and level, take a tiny bit off the top end, the white end, or the non the bottom end which will make sense in a minute because we're going to use that for something else and I'm just going to roll that. We just want a couple of tiny bits of clay just to hold these bits in place. So I'm just going to roll it into a little log and press it in so it's across both ends of the hoops 
and then just pull it in and neaten it off to get it nice and flat. It doesn't have to look anything at this stage because it's going to be completely covered but it's just holding those completely in place so we can put our petals on and again you can just put it up to your template to check that that's still as it should be and repeat with the other one. We're now ready to take our slices of our canes. So I'm going to have this as the inner slices and this is the outer slices. In flowers, the inside tends to be slightly darker or brighter than the outside, but it's completely up to you which way you do it and which way you choose to put it on. I'm going to take fairly thin slices because we're going to be layering them up double so they can be quite thin and still have quite a lot of integrity and cut the slices as thin as you feel comfortable with. And I'll do that with my blade. So for the inner one, we need eight slices, and for the outer petals, we need 12. So I'm cutting them about that size, but to say whatever you feel comfortable with. So I'll cut the remainder of these and bring you back when they're done. With your template to use, if you want, I've got all my slices cut ready of both the dark and the light, and I'm going to put that up there, and the darker ones are actually going to be the purple on the template. So I'm just going to add that on so it follows along the line that we were using of the metal and then this one goes slightly off to one side. Don't worry about the fact you've got a little bit of the white clay showing underneath because that's going to get covered in a minute but I will immediately turn it over and put the petals on the reverse and do it so that they match at the tips and then very gently just pull over and push them together along the tips. Okay, so that's your first bit and then repeat exactly the same with the other one. And because they're double sided, you don't have to worry about doing one one way and one the other. You can do them both exactly the same because they'll look the same on either side. Okay, so it's your darker petals done and then the lighter ones. I'll do the outside ones first. So the first one I do is going down so it comes off towards the bottom. Next one from that middle going up towards the top and then the third one comes from the middle, covers over any excess clay popping through and goes down there. And that's the base of the um, flower completed and then we'll do exactly the same for the next one. Having got them completed I've actually decided that that's too bright a green I think so I'm going to go for a softer um, mint green so I'm going to do that one instead. So there we go, so I'll put that through on setting number seven. Now if you're lucky enough to have a small heart cutter and this is from a pack pen set and I'll put a link to these in the details below then you can simply take four little cutouts using that and of course it should be attached to the rest of the pack pen but I've just used it separately. If you don't have a heart cutter you can get a very nice effect with a small round cutter and again I'll put links as to where you can get these from in the details below the video. So with the hearts all I'm going to do is put the point right up towards the back and it just gives it a nice sort of finishing detail. So that just sits over there. If you say you've just got the um, circle, chop it in half. And you can put them together the wrong way up. Like that. And that gives you a nice little finish instead. So do that if you don't have the heart. So you can leave them like that. I like to add a little extra detail just at the very top and of course you could always add a tiny little diamante crystal in there as well which would look lovely if you prefer. But just the detail, little detail I'm adding from the very end of our two cane cut off pieces I've taken a little bit of the dark purple and a little bit of the lilac and I've rolled very small balls of the purple and even smaller ones of the lilac and then towards the base of one of our pieces I create a hole with my cable needle take the dark purple, push it in, create another hole and then where that other hole is just pop a tiny bit of the lilac in and I'm going to do that on all four sides. And then the very last thing I do is just with the 
blunt side of my craft knife, so not the sharp blade, the blunt bit. I'm just going to add a couple of little lines, the slightest bit of texture, and then one down the middle of each petal and down the inside bits. Sometimes it shows, sometimes it doesn't, and I'll do this on each side of each of the two earrings. I'll put them on a piece of card, on a tile, cover the whole thing without touching the clay in aluminium foil and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay I am using. Once they've cooled, just add your earring findings. I've chosen the very simple fish hook ones. So I'm just going to open up the loop, pop that on, close up, and that's the earring finished. So there we are, quick and simple flower earrings. With polymer clay. That's the, the lilac and purple ones that I've done. I've also done some with aqua into white where I put the aqua on the outside so when I rolled that one up I rolled white on the inside and aqua on the outside and then on the inside we've got emerald green and white and again that was from the dark through to the light and a little bit of lilac just for the detail at the tip of the petals and then with slightly stronger colours I've gone for the brilliant blue to the white and then the raspberry to the white with the apple green and then the little dots on the inside. And when I was doing my prototype examples, I did them without any white in at all. So this was peppermint through to the brilliant blue for the outside, and then the raspberry through to plum on the inside. But what I actually did with these was did the opposite on the reverse. And then again with the apple green at the top. And the reason I ended up not doing these um, with the original one is that of course, once you've put them on, on the earring findings, you only have the one side showing. But for a bit of fun, you can always do them where they've got the reverse on the other side. And that's it, that's the tutorial finished. Quick and simple flower earrings in polymer clay. I hope you enjoyed that one and I hope you have great fun making some of your own. As always, thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you next time when I do my next tutorial. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>